Hello and welcome to episode 50 of Linux Downtime. I'm Joe and we've got a full house today. So, hello Martin. Hello. Hello Hayden. Hello. Hello Dalton. Hey. And hello Stuart. Hello. Or should I say welcome back Stuart. (laughs) Thank you very much. So, the reason that we are all gathered here today is that you've got some feedback for us Stuart. You were listening to the last Linux Downtime episode and uh, you thought there was some gatekeeping happening. So, uh, episode 49, I believe it was, and the question you collectively decided to discuss was, what's the definition of a Linux distribution? The feedback I gave was that that felt gatekeepy, but I think, I don't know whether you misinterpreted me or whether I, I appreciate the chance to explain, but my issue here is not that you were going about the business of gatekeeping, and you went on in the episode to basically decide that the idea of coming up with a definition of Linux distribution is kind of meaningless, because there are some things which very clearly are. You know, Ubuntu is very clearly a Linux distribution. Bananas are very clearly not a Linux (laughs) distribution. Something midway in between the two? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, don't know. And that's the, um, the process you arrived at. My issue, and the reason I brought it up, is not because you came to the wrong conclusion. It's that Putting the discussion on the table at all is a bad idea because it only serves bad means. Literally no one needs a hard, bright line definition of what a Linux distribution is. The only people who want that are people who want to be able to point at something they don't like and say, that's not a Linux distribution. My best example I have here, and my apologies to... I was going to say Americans, but non-UK people in general. Here in the UK, there is a show called Question Time, a political panel show. And they tend to have people on from all sides of the political divide. And imagine if Question Time or a, a political discussion show in your country decided they were going to ask the question, what is an Englishman? Right? And then they were to go on and say, but we had people from both sides of the, the divide on there, so it's okay, we, we achieved balance. And the issue is not how you address that question, it's that you address that question. Because putting that on the table at all, first of all, so we come back to your what is a Linux distribution question, right? No one needs an answer to this. As I say, <laughs> it's not that you're doing gatekeeping, it's that people want that question so they can do gatekeeping, and the fact that you, a bunch of influencers in our, fine, you're big fish in a relatively small pond, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but nonetheless. Small fish in a small pond, but yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you are people who are looked up to by the community, and you're putting questions like, what is a Linux distribution on the table, which means that people will take away from that, this is an okay thing to discuss. But actually, no one needs an answer to this question. And you putting it out there empowers the sort of people who want to ask it because they want to be able to say, that thing you're doing, that's not a Linux distribution. That's gatekeeping. It's not that you're doing gatekeeping, it's that you're empowering gatekeepers to, you're encouraging people to think that gatekeeping is okay. And that's my complaint. I think about on those same lines, we in Linux After Dark did end up covering what is a desktop Linux distribution. But what we ultimately arrived at is eh, probably everything that is (laughs) desktop and also Linux or has a graphical shell, which at that point doesn't leave a lot of room for gatekeeping. It's just, yep, that's a Linux. That's a desktop. Looks good. And at that point, it's difficult for people to do gatekeeping on it. I can't disagree with what Stuart's just outlined there, that yes, this does create an environment to have a polar conversation, but I don't think that's what we were setting out to discuss. It was really identifying that what was Linux, what we called Linux some decades ago, has really changed, and really today... It's the very absence of Linux itself that defines what Linux is as a platform for many developers around the world. I think a theoretical discussion about what is a Linux distro in an age of immutable bases and containers and WSL wasn't meant to gatekeep any one or any particular project out. I think our purpose was to show that 
what we think of as Linux and a Linux distro is evolving. The thing I'm attempting to get across here is not that I think your discussion arrived at the wrong conclusion or even that you went into it with bad intentions. I completely agree with you. You were not intending to do any gatekeeping. What I'm telling you is despite your intentions, what I think happens is putting that question on the table empowers gatekeepers and doesn't do any good to anybody else. Because yeah, you're obviously going to arrive at the conclusion that it can be a whole bunch of things and it doesn't really matter. The end of your discussion is precisely saying to people, don't go out and do gatekeeping on this because there is no actual definition. However, maturity in journalism, I think, lies in recognizing when questions are ones that you shouldn't ask and therefore not asking them rather than saying we're going to ask them and then go this question didn't need asking in the first place and that's our conclusion the problem is you don't get any credit for that no one knows that you were very mature journalists who didn't put this on the table but nonetheless i think that's the way it should be i mean so you you said um what you really want to talk about was how we've evolved so how does what we consider our operating systems how have they evolved from what they look like in what Slackware looked like in 1995? And that's a really interesting question. But you're not in any way at that point asking the question, what is a Linux distribution? You're not empowering people to go, that isn't. You're saying, what's changed? What's evolved? That's a really good question. And I think if maybe this is a, a question about how you phrase it or how you introduce it, not about the discussion you have. If you'd gone into it and said, we're going to talk about how what we think of as our OSs or Linux-based OSs, how we feel they've evolved in the last 30 years, I wouldn't have had word one of feedback. I'd have said, that was great. I really enjoyed that discussion. No notes. It's because it was phrased as, what is a Linux distribution, which is a question which is only asked by people who want to point at things and say that isn't. And everyone who does that wants to do it for bad reasons only. I disagree with the last part there. I don't think that there's anything inherently bad with organizing things into categories and understanding that the old model of what a Linux distribution is, is changing, has changed, and will change further in the future. I think that it is of almost academic interest. And, you know, academic is used loosely here, but this show and other shows like it are a discussion of things within the Linux world. And I think that what a distribution is, is a fair enough thing to to talk about. I, I don't think that, well, I just, I don't agree with you that it's only gatekeepers who want to to know what that is. I agree that, yes, you can take that question. You can work out what isn't a Linux distribution. You could say Chrome OS isn't, for example, and, and use that to gatekeep and say, oh, well, you're not a proper Linux user because you're only using Chrome or you're only using WSL, Hade, and therefore you're not using a proper Linux distro. Yes, you can be an arsehole about it if you want, but... I still think it has value as an interesting discussion to see what is a Linux distribution and what isn't. You know, to, to say that perhaps that WSL isn't a distribution it is just a platform. That's interesting. You don't have to do anything with that information other than just store it away in your memory. So my purpose wasn't to exclude. In fact, I specifically want to have this discussion to expand the definition of what Linux is. Because personally, I get gatekeeped every day. <laughs> When I talk about WSL and being a Linux user, including in the uh, LNL Telegram, when someone asked me, what's your favorite distro? Uh, I said, OpenSUSE on WSL. So it happens. In this case, I look at it as achieving the opposite goal, which is to have this discussion to, in fact, disarm the gatekeepers and open it up and have a more flexible understanding of what the Linux ecosystem is. Man, the way to disarm people asking questions like that is, in my opinion, not to say, let's ask that question. Let's have everyone asking that question all the time and then explain the answer is to say, stop asking questions like that. What questions should we be asking then? How have the operating systems we've used changed? Why is it that people think WSL is not a Linux distribution? I mean, you know, if, you're, if your problem is gatekeeping, talk about gatekeeping. Well, isn't that what we're doing right now? Yes, we are. We are now talking about gatekeeping, and that's good, and that's a useful show. This is not the sh this is not episode 49 of Linux Downtime. This is episode <laughs> 50 or whatever. <laughs> that, to me, is the key point here, that you're making the question askable when we should be, as much as possible, in my opinion, 
encouraging people not to ask this sort of question because I said, you know, it's only used for gatekeeping. And you said, no, no, there's loads of other reasons, but I haven't heard any. Academic interest is enough for me just to be interested in it. It's like categorizing different types of rock. I mean, yeah, there can be sometimes benefits of that, but someone who's really into geology as a hobby, let's say, wants to know what is, I have no idea about it. You know, what's this type of rock? What's that type of rock? (laughs) And, you know, they might display them on a shelf or maybe, you know, there's some different types of crystals that have different structures and different colors that look really nice or whatever. And there's no point to that other than just to do it. And just because they're interested in the different chemical properties, let's say, of two different rocks. I am not a geologist, and it is possible that we may get a whole bunch of hate mail from geologists when I say there isn't anyone saying you're not a proper geologist because you look at granite rather than obsidian. There are lots of people who are saying you're not a proper Linux user because I don't think the thing you use is a proper distribution. I'd be very surprised if there wasn't that sort of gatekeeping in the (laughs) geology community. So I think Joe was struggling with the difference there between cordite and diamonds from a geological (laughs) point of view. Um, But um, I suppose the question that we asked was really a mechanic to have the conversation that we had. And as you've pointed out, the conversation was quite expansive and covered a lot of ground. What is a Linux distribution is a very simple thing to say and for people to grok what the conversation is about to be. What is a Linux distribution? There are some people out there that really struggle with the concept of what Linux is, you know, whether it's the kernel or the operating system. I think you mean GNU slash Linux. (laughs) This is gatekeeping now. (laughs) And Stuart, in your earlier explanation, you posed the question of why isn't WSL a Linux distribution, which just feels like the inverse of the question that we asked. That also feels like a gatekeepy question. It is. And part of the the point I was trying to make with that is Hayden brings up the fact that uh, people do gatekeeping him all the time. And that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. The difference is, I think... What is a Linux distribution does not sound like it's a question about gatekeeping. It sounds like it's a sort of normal question that Linux people talk about, but actually it's only used for gatekeeping. That's Mm -hmm. why I gave you the feedback. If you'd have said, we're doing a discussion about how people are being kept out of Linux, then it's a discussion intended to be about gatekeeping. So you don't get any feedback saying, I don't think you should do this. The reason I brought up the idea of maturity, or however you'd want to phrase it earlier, is that, as I say, you chaps are influential and the discussion you had was really interesting and valuable but someone who just essentially reads the headlines will take away from it the idea that is this thing a linux distribution is a good and reasonable question to ask and i would like people to stop asking that question Mm. not to ask it and then bring lots of nuance to the discussion if you want to have the nuanced discussion do it that's great but The very idea that people are asking, is this thing a Linux distribution? I disagree with you, Joe. No one wants to ask that question for good reasons. Everyone who's bothered about that is bothered about it for bad reasons, because everyone else goes, who cares? Why is it important whether Ubuntu 20.04 is more or less a Linux distribution than Chrome OS? Who's bothered by that? Like, the FSF might be bothered by it, but you literally took the mick out of them for doing this. I wanted to have this conversation because I didn't understand where you were coming from with the claims of, you know, gatekeepiness over our discussion. As I, as it turns out, it isn't the content of our discussion. It's how we framed that discussion and the catalyst for how we had the conversation. And the very fact that we're here talking about this, a conversation I had with Joe was, I think it's important in order to develop the trust of the listeners of this podcast, that we acknowledge the fact that there is feedback, that we do listen, and we are paying attention and want to improve based on what people are saying. Now, yourself and Dalton are in an interesting position in that you are both also uh, influential in our little fishbowl of the world that we all swim amongst. But, you know, if there were other listeners who had the same takeaway that our conversation was gatekeeping, well, I was quite alarmed that this was a complaint that was being levelled 
at the podcast because I have worked extremely hard over the years to combat gatekeeping and absolutely step away from it and not be a part of that toxic culture. So I was very concerned that we'd strayed into something unwittingly and I don't want to be associated with that. Are you still concerned having heard Stuart out? I suppose what I'm taking away from it is I'm not concerned that the topic and the content that we covered is gatekeeping, but I do acknowledge that maybe in the future we could choose our catalyst for the conversation starter, choose the words behind that differently in order to not frame it in a way that could be polar in you know how you're expected to respond to the opening question. And what about you, Hayden? You were keen to take part in this as well, because, you know, you have said you, you're very much against gatekeeping, as am I. And that's why I wanted to hear out Stuart's argument, because it didn't make any sense to me going into this. <laughs> I think it's relatively clear that it still doesn't make a massive lot of sense to me coming out of it. But what about you, Hayden? How do you feel? Well, I'm very concerned about gatekeeping in the Linux community as well. It is a very serious problem. I think the question still deserves to be asked and discussed because a developer using a Chromebook with code spaces and a container in the cloud to develop on Linux, I want them to know they're using Linux. A developer using WSL, I want them to know they're using Linux. I want them to know that they are welcome in the community and that if they hear other opinions from the toxic side of the community outside of this mature set of Linux community moderates here among the influencers, that they've heard from us that they are welcome. And they are just as much Linux users as someone who installs it on bare metal. And yeah, I was concerned that I was engaging in gatekeeping because, and that's why I wanted to come here steward out. But I still do think the question deserves to be asked for the exact opposite reason that Stuart says we shouldn't ask it. And I would also like to add that my definition of what is a Linux distribution is by no means definitive. It was a straw man in order to prop up the opening debate that we had in that last episode. It was trying to find a description that gave us the opportunity to expand beyond those traditional norms of what people consider Linux to be. Well, Stuart, I was being a bit facetious there. I definitely will consider the questions that we ask and the topics we cover, and more importantly, how we ask them. That's the point that you're trying to make here, and that has hit home, and I'm going to take that away from this, that it is important to understand the framing of of what we discuss. And do let us know, dear listener, what you think about this. Did you come away from episode 49 with the same feelings as Stuart and Dalton or not? Show at linuxdowntime.com. But with that, we'd better get out of here then. We'll see you all in a couple of weeks.